go read the hundreds of complaints about them on the Better Business Bureau. Yikes. Ninety-nine percent of Melaleuca reps lose money. According to this commenter on one of my videos, original video will be in the link in the description below. Okay, so let's cover what they said, provide a reasonable response, gain some perspective, maybe some best practices or mistakes to avoid along the way. And without further ado, let's get up into it. Okay, this person says, my question is, do people not do their own research before joining an MLM? Go look at any income disclosure statement of any MLM, I'd also add their compensation plan, who publishes them online, and you will not find one where more than 1% make any money. So let's also look at the income disclosure statement of corporate employee, part-time positions, franchise owners, mom and pop shop people. Oh, that's right, they don't have an income disclosure statement. They just have what their income is on Classdoor, but not how many people make what. I mean, maybe in their HR department, you know, they might show not just income, but how long they're with the company. And, you know, because they do, obviously, like how long you stay with the company, they have rewards and bonuses and seniority. So that's more of an HR thing, but it's not public in an income disclosure statement. Let's see those. And the anti-MLM person would still be like, well, at least they're making money. It's not 1%, Lance. It's a lot more than that. Well, okay, well, let's just get the information first, okay? Because you're just pointing and doing this, see, 1%. And you're not actually like, well, let's look at everything. Maybe it's 10% with corporations on average, or it's mom and pops, it's you know, 20% that make a certain amount for this long before they go out of business or run out of capital or whatever. So I think there's a lot of other things, you know, retention or attrition, you know, satisfaction. There's a, there's a morale, I mean, besides money, what percent of people make it. But anyways, that's more of a broader look to get, you know, the bigger picture. But this person's got the blinders on, so let's continue. They said, not one, Google MLM FTC, and you'll see that our own government warns against them and actually posted a study done that shows 99% of people who join them lose money. Okay, so it's all about the finances. So I've covered this in my past videos, but there are five main factors that determine success in a network marketing company when you do it as a business. Number one is your skills, your goals, your effort, the quantity and quality of your network as well as your lead generation system. And a lot of times people don't know where they're at in these categories or they think they're better than they are or they don't focus on them and they just let you know the chips fall where they may and there you go. But I think you know you don't necessarily have to consciously think about those five things but if you do you at least have more awareness as to the root cause as to why something worked out or not financially within a network marketing company when somebody did or didn't do it as a business or you know because they quit typically but and so that that's also something that they never factor in but I always try to factor in because it's the other side of the coin because they're just providing anti-MLM and I'm trying to provide more of a neutral pro MLM side that still acknowledges what they're saying I'm not saying what they're saying isn't true notice that I acknowledge what they're saying but I'm saying there's reasons and root causes for each problem and thing that's going on which they don't care about they're just like look here's the problem and I'm like I understand that there is a problem or perceived problem with not enough people making a certain amount. I mean, but the reason why it isn't two, three, four, five, ten, twenty percent is these main reasons. Now let's see how those reasons play out in each of the people that you've talked to in person or done surveys on or done your interviews. Or, oh, that's right, you haven't done interviews. Oh, that's right. You only talk to the the people that had bad experiences and, and are being negative. Oh, that's right. You haven't you know done any surveys and you know got a representative sample. Oh, okay. So you're just looking at the small percent of people that had a negative or bad experience, and you're just saying, "See, it's horrible." Look, compensation plan, income disclosure statement. See, you know, it's just like, my goodness. Okay. Then they say, and what really makes me laugh is when you read all the social media posts from people peddling this nonsense and they all claim to be living the good life. They could have their quality of life being enhanced, either emotionally or physically. So, it is not possible, exclamation point, they say. Why do you think MLMs are shaped like a pyramid? So is the corporate structure, CEO, senior vice presidents, Vice presidents, senior directors, directors, employees, you know, or actually it's senior managers and managers and employees and direct reports, and it's literally like a pyramid. Then they say, because only the very few at the top make anything. 
It's not an upside down pyramid. Their uplines tell them to fake it until they make it. And that if you believe that you're successful, you will be. I mean, yeah, I mean, there are a number of sayings that try to help you encourage, that, that encourage you to stick with it and not give up. And, you know, I mean, fake it till you make it. I've heard it. I've said it myself. But after further review, I would say it's important to just be yourself and be honest. And that served me better. But at the same time, being honest with unreasonable people doesn't turn out very well. Because they don't like the truth or they just want to win and be right. And it's not about helping you feel heard and understood. It's about them getting their point across or convincing you or, or, or really rubbing the poo in your face. Right? That's, that's really what it's more about with them. And that's... This is not a competition. This is not a tennis match. This is not the Super Bowl. This is a discussion about people's livelihoods and quality of life. And I think it should be more than just weird emojis that they're putting in here that I, you know, you obviously can't see. But these roll, you know, the rolling of the eye emoji up whenever they, you know, do or laughing emoji, making fun. You know, I, I think, you know, there's a level of um, mockery and blaming and shaming that anti-MLM people do in general. Notice I said in general, because I am generalizing, but I'm admitting to it. But specifically, this person. Notice how I went case by case. Mm, so, boom. There you go. <laughs> and then they say, it's like no one does any research themselves. It's because we buy emotionally and we justify rationally on the back end. So it's all about how you feel on the front end. And, you know, maybe some logic is done on the back end when you're defending your purchase to the wife, the husband, the friend, the coworker, or whoever it is. So I, that's just how things work. Don't like it, then you don't like biology and psychology then. Then they say, they just take the word of the upline who is making money off their purchases and recruits so of course they're gonna paint a nice rosy picture for you well i mean yeah if you hear a very one-sided even if it's positive thing you should do your research and try to find contrarian things or things that weaken it but they're just finding the negative and saying see all of it's bad or 99 percent lose money one percent make money i've done a video on this i've covered this right it's, it's really the top seven mistakes that anti-mlmers make and this is one of them, right? Overgeneralizing, just not understanding the root causes of the problem or perceived problem. So they perceive 1% of people making, or 1% of distributors making money as a problem. But I would say, well, it's not a problem when you understand the root cause um, because there's a reason for 1% and why it's not 2, 3, 4, 5, 10%, like I said earlier. Then they finally say, and how about how secretive they are? It's like they don't want anyone finding out they're just another legal parentheses, pyramid scheme. You, that's an oxymoron. You can't have a legal pyramid scheme. It's, it's an illegal pyramid scheme. Or you can just say pyramid scheme, which would be accurate because pyramid scheme is Ill, already illegal. So anyways, until they get you signed up and anyone trying to recruit you into this refuses to admit that it's an MLM. I mean, for Melaleuca, I've seen that more so from their distributors. Yeah, they don't want to admit that it's a multi-level or network marketing, even though their compensation plan and how they you know get customers is is network marketing and multi-level but maybe that's just something that they just communicate from the top down or there it's part of their company values I'm not sure if somebody if somebody knows let me know why that's the case and I if somebody tells me why Melaleuca reps or if you are a Melaleuca rep and you're like hey it's it's not considered an MLM or network marketing because this is and this then then we'd have to also look at other network marketing companies and how they structure and if it's the same thing then it's like mm, okay <laughs> Then they finally, finally say, um, it's 100% an MLM, FFs, go read the hundreds of complaints about them on the Better Business Bureau, yikes. Usually, not always, notice I'm not overgeneralizing, but sometimes I do generalize, and I do admit when I do, when I'm trying to make a point. But anyways, typically people leave reviews when they have a bad experience, or they, you know, people will share a, something bad to 10 people, but they might share something good to one person. And it's typically how word of mouth works. Are there exceptions? Yes. Do I admit those? Yes, they do happen. And yeah, there are, but let's look at how many people had a good experience. You know, if they, if they have, have had millions of customers over the years, then a few hundred complaints is, is, is very small. And every company gets complaints from people because some people just like to complain. Or some people have legitimate complaints, whether it be you're staying at a hotel or, you know, you're using an Uber or Lyft or at your job, there's complaints or, you know, there's complaints. I mean, there's complaints and then there's constructive feedback, I think. And complaining is just venting and ranting and not providing some type of solution that you could help with. 
or lead. I, I think providing constructive feedback gives something in a way where somebody can improve and it's not just so negative. I think there is an element of, hey, here's, here's what I saw, or here's what I noticed. You know, maybe even here's how I feel about that, or here's what I prefer prefer instead. And it's up to the other person to honor that or not, or agree with that or not, just, you know, like that or not, or even give a counter solution that's more in the middle. And it's up to the other person to be like, all right, I'm fine with that, or maybe we can do this or that and give a counter to the counter. And you may be like, oh, it's so complicated. Who wants to do that? But that's part of communication. We you, There's give and take in a healthy relationship, and there's healthy boundaries, and there's you know, there's maybe counter proposals or there's solutions given with reasonable people and unreasonable people just focus on the problem and they just want to be winning and they want to be right and that's unreasonable people but reasonable people are like well what solutions are there and how do we focus on what's true and how do we seek understanding so we can come to accurate conclusions about things and not just put stuff in a box like my unboxings for the doTERRA LRP shipments that I get. Okay, hello. If you haven't seen one of those, just, you know, doTERRA LRP unboxing Lance McGowan, just YouTube search that. Okay, cool. Anyways, that concludes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click the like button if you did and got some value out of it. Share this video with somebody that would benefit from it. And most importantly, check out the links in the description below so you can continue to get your learn on if you value personal development and self-improvement, which this person clearly needs to do, but it's up to them to do it. I don't control people. I just influence them for their own betterment. And I will see you in the next video.